that's the the floodgates just may uh, open up here, folks. And in, in the context of um, the next thing would be the banking structure for these cop. Uh, pot companies. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go right into the newsletters. You're going to see it on the left-hand side. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199. Or 22 percent, you get it for one full year for 11.95, which is a savings of 593 dollars, or 33 percent. Now they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Basil has a huge amount of archives on the page, so the way it works, you come over, you check it out, you get it. You have a 30-day money-back guarantee. You're going to understand how to ride that wave each and every day. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Very good, thank you. So we're looking at this Dow, down 452 points. And for a little while now, I've been talking to you about this particular indicator, this indicator of last resort, I call it. The move, this, this is the nine and 14 period moving averages. Yeah. And what I had said is that from November the 3rd, the Dow, uh, once it crossed positive, this green line stayed positive all the way to the 20, uh, to the 4th of April. Then it went pink, and we're looking at this pink nine-period moving average still underneath the 14. And um, one of the things I use this for is to say, what is what is the trend? This is the daily chart, which is very different to the weekly chart, but it's a daily chart. And it says to me that at this particular point, the consolidation that we've been talking about in the Dow is still undergoing. But look at this. Here's the S&P. S&P was green from November, right there, November the, uh, there's a daily chart, November the 6th, stayed green right up until the uh, 12th of April. So it started its rally a couple of days later than the Dow, and it ended uh, a little later. But here it is, pink, and it's just reversed down sharply. So until that goes green, the, the, the I call it the tide, the tide hasn't really changed from this turn down. If you look at the QQQ, that's the index 100, it's the same thing, pink. And this one is a little bit more bumpy a road because there were a couple of days in January where it went pink, went right back to green within two days, and it stayed that way, and then started this choppy pink, green, pink. Green is positive, pink is negative, and now it's been pink. I probably should say red, but I, I like pink because you have the bars that are red. So I like the difference in color. And the IWM, which is the Russell 2000, this is going to be the big thing. Russell 2000 is down three and a half right now, but it, it, it had a chance, just a momentary chance to move higher. And one of the things that I've been looking at is um, the Magnificent Seven, one by one, they just started to fail. And even though we've got Microsoft, you can see Microsoft here, uh, we've got Microsoft down to the 338 level. It's screamed all the way to the 420s. But here it is at 393, and you can see that pink nine period moving average is expanding. So I'm looking at how does this market unfold over the next couple of weeks uh, in which we could see uh, the weak stocks. You know, money always likes to find the best home. So I wouldn't be surprised if money does come out of these really big caps, at least for a, a kind of a consolidation period of maybe three to five weeks. And that money will find another place. So we're looking to see exactly where it is. Now, it's interesting that on the weekly charts, I'll just jump over to the weekly charts, and you'll see, there it is. Look, the Dow, that green nine period moving average in the weekly chart hasn't yet turned down, but it's really close. So that's the Dow. But the monthly chart has made a peak. See, in the Chapman Wave of buy mode invariably goes to four higher peaks. So I'm still looking at higher highs to come in 2024. Because there's only a peak seam, we'll still need a leg D, which will be above 39,889. Here's the same thing with the S&P, but I'm going to go to the S&P futures because okay. I think that's a little bit clearer. The S&P has got a peak C, but the futures have got a D. And I like to have synchronicity, but you can see that nine period moving average hasn't yet, it's not even close to turning down. To get the nine period moving average in the weekly chart to go negative, You'd probably have to be down the uh, 
five four thousand and ninety area. Sorry, yeah, four thousand and ninety, and here we are at five thousand eighty seven. So so far, that's still a positive weekly chart, but we have got a leg D in the monthly chart, and this is very interesting because we've got a leg D in the monthly chart, but a peak D in the cash. So there are a lot of divergences, and I think this this market is just waiting for some some kind of a resolution to how it unfolds, taking money away from what has been working beautifully up until like those big caps, Microsofts, Amazons, etc. And and what happens to the money as we start to digest these gains? And and you know it's so fascinating. You just mentioned MSOS. This is the uh, cannabis sector. So we had this as a long position advisor shares pure U.S. cannabis. And the only reason why we had it was, I believe it was uh, Kamala Harris had mentioned uh, something that was very really favorable, but there was no follow up. And then I've been getting calls and, and subscribers said, well, what are we going to do? And what I said is, if you're a longer term player, there's no question in my mind that at some point this this and MJ is the other one. This is advisor shares and alternate harvest is the is broader it has the canadian stocks as well the other one is just u.s cannabis stocks i said if you have patience this is going to work but you need to have something that is not just a, a nuance you've got to have some structure either banking or in this case uh, there's the da there's got to be some effort that really changes the modus operation the way you can look at these things now i think it's freed up these stocks to start to move a little bit higher so as i'm talking i've been uh, for my in my show and i'll do this again tomorrow in my show at 10 o'clock i've been talking about the bitcoin how it made a top but there was a really good chance that it would pull back and if it took out the 60,000 key support I think it can go down a little bit further. So here it is at 60,270. So it's just interesting to see how money is going to flow over the next uh, couple of days. We'll see what the Fed says because the TLT, the bonds, um, there's this inside track repellent zone in the weekly chart of the TLT. And so far it's holding in this. So I, we need to see the bond yields start to come down so that uh, there's a little bit of a relief there. Um, this is a really interesting market right now, but we've raised cash. I think it's, we're going to have a lot of positions that we could put on on this pullback. And um, I'm just, I think it's a good time to be looking at stocks that you missed on the way up. Wait, you can wait for them to come down and just make a list because I think we'll get a buying opportunity. And I am looking at higher highs maybe in the summer. Make a list and check it twice. I Absolutely. Love it. And all those round numbers, you saw what happened. Those oh, stocks the, I meant to sharp. tell you that, well, you see gold, the low, round number today, low, 2300.00. Zero, zero. That's yeah. amazing, huh? It is. Yeah. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one. Stay right Thank there. Come you, right Tom. back.